venues access using a microconvex probe has several advantages, and this video is a demonstration of our preferred technique. Be sure to have a comfortable working position with the ultrasound machine clearly within your line of sight. Locate the vein by first identifying the clavicle. Then visualize a line at a 90 degree angle from the body's midline and align the probe with it. Then tilt cranially in order to visualize the subclavian vein, artery or preferably both vessels in the same view, here highlighted in blue and red respectively. The artery usually pulsates and is located deeper, more cranially, while the vein is shallower and expands and contracts with the respiratory cycle, though note that it may appear to pulsate due to the proximity to the artery. Now prep a large area including the clavicle and up on the neck according to your local guidelines. While waiting for the chlorhexidine to dry, prep your tray. Place your equipment in the order you'll be using it, and make sure to loosen all needle covers. Everything should be easily accessible by one hand, since you do not want to move the probe once you've found the perfect ultrasound view. Drape the patient and make sure to leave some space on the neck above the clavicle. Position the probe as far medial as possible, where the diameter is the largest and the vessel is less prone to collapse. This is especially important in the hypovolemic patient. Start injecting local anesthetic a few centimeters away from the edge of the probe, making sure to cover the point of cannulation and where the sutures will go. Then inject towards the vein, which is possible only if a long cannula is used. Use the empty 2cc syringe as an improvised handle and place the index finger along the cannula in order to facilitate lateral displacement. Advance the cannula in a continuous motion, but proceed only if you see the tip. Note that a property of the microconvex probe is that the cannula becomes slightly harder to visualize once it passes beyond the midline of the picture. Aspiration of dark, non-pulsatile blood indicates that we've successfully punctured the vein. Now insert the guide wire and confirm its correct location by observing a hyperchoic line in the subclavian vein, here highlighted in red. Next, move the probe to the neck and increase the depth to about 10 centimeters. Place the probe perpendicular to the internal jugular vein. If the guide wire has deviated cranially, this will appear as a hyperchoic dot in the vessel. This is clearly visible in an example from another patient, where we were able to promptly reposition the guide wire. As we tilt the microconvex probe caudally, the the main benefit of this technique becomes apparent, real-time confirmation of the guide wire position. Visualize the internal jugular vein, the subclavian vein and the superior vena cava. Also note the pulsating right pulmonary artery in the bottom of the picture. The echogenic guide wire is clearly visible in the desired location. Take care not to confuse it with the hyperchoic pleural line of the right lung, here marked in green. Proceed with the central line in the usual manner and further confirm the venue's placement by observing the height of a non-pulsatile blood column. We're currently performing a validation study, but we believe many post-procedure x-rays will be redundant if the guide wire position has been confirmed using this technique. For more of our videos in a